Okay guys, here we go. What we're going to look at today is river landforms, but looking at the old age or the lower course of the river. What would you expect to see? Well, because the river is coming towards the end, it is much bigger than what it was previously. It has had all of the tributaries flow into it and it flows very slowly along flat or almost flat land. The river is carrying a large load that it deposits near the sea, so there's a lot of sediment in the river. And deposition is the main process that is active at this stage because the river has a lot less energy, it's not able to carry the load. The features that we're going to have a look at include floodplains and levees, and those can both be found in the lower course of the River Moy. Deltas are also formed, and the best examples that we have of those can be seen near the mouth of the River Nile in Egypt. Now, the one that we're going to focus on today for our main example of a feature of the each stage of a, of a river is the floodplain. So this is a floodplain when the river is in flood. You can see that the water has left the river channel and has poured out over the flat land on either side of the river channel, flooding it. So our F, our feature, feature is a floodplain which is a wide flat area of land on either side of the river in its lower course. Our example again is in the lower course of the River Moy. Now that we've done our feature and our example it's time to have a think about our explanation. So we have our river channel here and beside it which is part of our floodplain. So our explanation. The river is nearing the sea and deposition is the main process. The river carries a large load of sediment known as alluvium. During a flood, the river spreads out beyond its banks, beyond the river channel and across the flat ground beside it. As it leaves the channel, it loses energy and starts to deposit its load. It drops the heaviest material first, close to the river channel, and the lighter material is dropped or deposited further away. So somewhere in here is our river, I think maybe down here, and all of this is part of the flood. Over time, a thick layer of alluvium builds up on the flat land by the river. This is the flood plain. Alluvium makes soil very fertile and good for farming. It's part of the reason why many of the ancient civilizations started in river basins or close to flood plains. The highest point reached by the river when it is in flood is called the bluff line. And we will have a diagram to follow. So that is your FEE -E with the D to follow for our old age stage feature, our flood plane. Now we're going to have a look at the other two features as well so that you can identify them by, by diagram and by map, if we could find one. So continuing on with the floodplain, this is what our diagram would look like. This is the river in its channel, our bluff line along here and along here, and all of this is your floodplain with the alluvial soil. Also a floodplain, and you can see here that there is thick layer of alluvial soil. You have an oxbow lake 
a meander scar, and we have our mean river as it winds across the floodplain. This is quite a nice diagram because it shows the river in its channel and then the river in flood. The one thing that might be wrong with that is that the water should have been a little bit more brown. Now in terms of our floodplain, it would be quite close to the river and the contour lines would not rise very much. So along here, although this is the reservoir, we might see aspects of a floodplain. If we look over here, you can see flat land on either side of this river channel. And also here, where we have this big sweeping meander, we have flat land, which facilitates a flood plain. Now, a levee, again our example is the River Moy. When the river is in flood, it drops the largest particles first and they build up as a ridge on either side of the river channel. That is our levee. And this is what happens during a flood. It may wash away part of the levee or it may just overwhelm the levee and continue to flood. So here's another levee. There's a road on top and another levee. Now levees can be natural, which are the ones we're more interested in, or they can be man-made. It can be used as a flood defence, but they're not entirely reliable. So we have our river in its channel, our flood plain as far as the bluff line on either side, and a levee has built up. Now one of the problems with the levee is if the river floods, it makes it difficult for the water to recede back into the river because the levee is there like a little ditch in the way. This again is showing your levee and alluvial soil that starts to get deposited on the river bed, causing issues with the river rising then above the floodplain. Now the delta that we're thinking about is the Nile delta, but there's also deltas on the um, Mississippi River would also have a significant one. So you can see you have these triangular shaped pieces of land and all of these individual rivers which are flowing through it are called distributaries. It's an important word. So again we have that triangular shaped land the water deposits lots and lots of its load and the distributaries running throughout them. And another one, this is a bird's foot delta with lots of distributaries again. And this is what your diagram of a delta might look like. This is how the load is deposited in these layers. And yet another diagram of your delta with the distributaries. And this is a diagram of the Mississippi Delta with New Orleans. And we are going to finish off by having a look at this explanation video of levees and deltas.